Hey guys, welcome to another Soul Encoded tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about values, types, and operators for our JavaScript series. There's not that much in this tutorial in terms of logical thinking, but it's more of an introduction to the basic foundations of JavaScript. So the way we're going to do uh, this read read through of this of the write up that I did is essentially a summary of the chapter one book, uh, uh, chapter one of the eloquent JavaScript book. And what I'm going to do is go through this write up and at the same time just quickly show you guys something on the terminal, so that you could get a very you could easily conceptualize what you're reading to what you can see in the action when you're actually writing code, right? So here it goes. So let's go into Node. So yeah, that's how you get into Node. And in any terminal, once you install Node, um, in the command line, if you type Node, you are in Node. And as you can see, um, I could start typing in, you know, like a log message here, hello world. This was part of the last one. And it kind of reads the line of code, evaluates, prints the line in the next line. So it's called the REPL, right? So let's go through this readme right here this is write up is the summary of the eloquent javascript book chapter one and um i had a good time rereading it over to prepare for this lecture but basically let's go step by step through this so in the in the book it talks so the first thing that we need to talk about is how are programs created what makes a program and to boil it down to its finest uh, smallest bit uh, smallest point is that everything is a bit and a bit is uh, essentially just a series of zeros and ones you know and that's all a computer program in the end is a bunch a bunch of zeros and ones it's actually crazy to think about that just simple zeros and ones can represent so much of our world and um, can simulate so many things virtually it's actually very crazy to think about and how fast it has progressed since its introduction um, but yeah so everything's a bit um, if you want to learn more about computers and how they work I highly recommend you as they may be um, interview questions that may come up in regards to memory and computers and how those things are working um, but for now let's dive right into JavaScript um, the first thing anyone needs to learn uh, the first thing that people need to know about programming is that we have what are called types and values, right? In JavaScript, there is six, uh, there's six basic types. There's numbers, strings, booleans, objects, functions, and they have an undefined value. Um, what are values? A uh, value is just simply a representation of data somewhere in your computer, right? And this goes back to how everything's a bit, right? Let's go right into our first type. Um, one more side thing about data types when you start to program you may be confused on what data type you are in right but I highly encourage you to constantly be thinking what data type is this particular um, value that I'm you know assigning or using or manipulating what data type is it you know because though that's like the number I found that that's the num uh, type confusion like not knowing which type you are in is the number one mistake that most beginner beginning programmers um, face mainly because uh, think about it this way the number um, so for example 13 if you do type of like let's say a number 13 this prints number and type of is a unary operator um, basically means it's an operator that takes one argument but uh, yeah so this prints number and that's the type of thir the value 13 but if you do type of and you put it in quotes single quotes the 13 it becomes a string now why is this important um, mainly because number and string there they have different functions attached to them so for example number will have like a two string but string won't have a two string and that's just a function that's attached to the number uh, data type that allows you to convert from number to string right so there's little things like that differences um, and they function a little bit differently right and they compare to each other differently so when you're programming 
be very conscious of what data type your um, particular value that you're trying to manipulate or assign, right? So be conscious of that. That's the number one reason why JavaScript um, developers, I mean, a lot of people who get into JavaScript, they don't really understand because JavaScript, I'll go into this more in detail a little bit later, but JavaScript has what is called automatic type uh, conversion, right? Um, basically, it, let's say that you type in a string here, like 13, right? That's a string. But let's say you want to add, um, so if you did, let's, let's assign um, x to the number 13, the string 13 plus one, right? And then we print x, that becomes a string, right? If you do type of x, that's a string. And why is that x, why is that x a string here? Um, mainly, mainly because the 13, and one, they shoot, they're different types, but in JavaScript, it automatically converts that one into uh, a string. So it's 131, right? Let's go right into it. Um, so in, in JavaScript, there is a type called number, and here's a number, type of 13 or 12, that's the number. And in programming, we usually have what's called an integer, which represents a whole number. And a whole number is anything that doesn't have a decimal. So like one, two, they're whole numbers. And then we have floating point numbers, which are uh, decimal numbers. So like 12.12 or something like that. But in JavaScript, both of them are um, numbers. They're both numbers. And we also have infinity values. So if you do something like, I believe, one divided by zero, that gives you infinity. Minus one divided by zero, that gives you negative infinity. And if you do zero divided by zero, that's a nan. Um, this is actually an error in the original um, creation of JavaScript, but it just stands for not a number. Uh, infinity, minus infinity, and nan is just something you should know about, but they're just meant for unsensical values, essentially. So moving on, um, JavaScript has a number of arith arithmetics, right? <clears throat> you you could think of them as just standard math operators, right? So you'll have you know plus operator, you'll have the minus operator, you'll have multiplication operators, you'll also have division, right? And in most programming languages, there's something called modulus or modulo, um, which is a fancy word for remainder. So if you do remainder, uh, uh, and you do that by the uh, percent operator, or it looks like the percent, but that's the modulus. And that'll be zero because there's no more remainder. But if you do something like 13 modulo two, that'll be one because there's one remainder in that division, right? So there's something like that. You also have to worry about order of operation here. Um, so for example, one plus two, or one plus three, times two is seven, but if you do one plus three times seven, it's 28 because of order of operation. Um, but yeah, in, when in doubt, just put it in parentheses, you know, just mean what you mean. Anyways, uh, moving on, uh, let's go to the type of string. Let's clear the screen. So if you did something like, uh, this is a string, right? And then you did type of this, of, you will see that this is a string. Now, how do you make a string? You could do um, single quote, uh, double quote, so double. You could do single, which is uh, single. And then you could also do back ticks. Back ticks. Right. These are all strings. And you could concat them together. So let's say uh, str1 equals hello space. And then we could say stir up, oh, stir one. Um, notice that I didn't put variable var in, but it just assumes that. Normally, you should define variables um, like stir two, for example. Let's say hello world, right? World. And then if you do hello one plus, I mean stir one plus stir two, that becomes hello world. Right? It concats them for you. Um, those are. Uh, so later, I'm gonna go into kind of string and numbers individually, and then type, uh, talk about the functions and methods that are attached to the string objects, like data objects, right? Um, because you're gonna be using that all the time. Like, and I just did concat, which is uh, part of it. 
Um, so oh, there's also Boolean values. So here's uh, oops, true and false. Those are the only two Boolean values. Sorry. Um, so the two Boolean values are true and false. It's just on or off essentially. And they're called Boolean. So if you do type of um, true, then it's Boolean, right? Okay. <clears throat> So with Boolean values, you can do comparisons and comparisons are used a lot in logical flows like if then. So for now, just understand that you could do something like true equal equals true and that gives you true, true equal equal um, equal equal false equals false. Now, why did I do equal equal versus equal equal equals? In JavaScript, as I mentioned, that there's types and the way the JavaScript double equals, which is the first one right here, this thing, the way that um, uh, the way that compares is it just compares a value and it automatically converts some types. So if you did something like 13 equals 13, this is true. But their date, their numbers may be true if they were automatically converted to each other, but they're not actually true, right? Because their data types are different. 13 on the left side is a string and the right side is um, a number. But if you did something like the same example, if you did 13, triple equals 13, it will be false. And that's because with triple equals, it, it checks the data type as well. And this is usually more so than not, the triple equals is what you're actually looking for. So I highly encourage you to stay away from the double equals. Um, the double equals and uh, the not, e not equals, right? So stay away from those two, use the triple versions of them. There's also, you know, greater than, so you could say like five is greater than six. Oh, that's false, obviously. And then you could do greater than equal to, so five is greater than equal to five, that's true. Um, and there's less than and less than greater, less than or equal to. One thing to know is you can compare strings, right? So you could say A is greater than I um, mean less than B. Now, this is true. How does it do that? Um, when JavaScript compares strings, all it does is it follows what's called a Unicode standard. And a Unicode standard is essentially just a, lit, a table with every character in every character in the Unicode, essentially. They have alphabetical letters, uh, numbers, they have other you know symbols, even like cat symbols, like they have like other Japanese characters and stuff. They're all in a, a, a table and they have a number associated with it. And when they when you compare strings, it compares based on the Unicode standard. You can find out more about that on the link that I have given in the tutorial. So there's also, moving on, those, so those are the comparisons. Uh, there's also logical operators and they're used when you wanna compare. This is mainly used for logic gates, right? So let me show you an example. Let's say that tr if you need a particular thing to be true and true for it to be true. So that's true. And for or is you need to have one thing true or you do double pipes, false. So this will output true because at least one of the values is true, right? And then you could say something like um, not true. So if it's not true, then this is false. So what, this is kind of a weird example, but you could use that with, you could use combine this with combinations, right? So you could say one, one is greater than two, and um, I think I might need to put that in parentheses. Let me try this. One is greater than two, and two is less than two, oh, less than, and three is greater than four, right? Sorry, less than four. That's false. Uh, one is greater than two. That's that's obviously why. Sorry, hard to life program, man. But yeah, so something like that. You could combine the comparisons with the logical operators to get um, your logic gate essentially. Now that's done for logical operators, and we also have what we're called undefined and null values. Um, I believe it, so. If you do type of type of undefined, you'll get undefined, right? So this is a special thing in JavaScript where it's just to represent a null, um, 
is to represent an absence of a value, essentially. So there's also null type of null, right? So it's an object, but null is a thing. So if you do var null uh, uh, empty value equals null, and then you do empty value, it should be null, yeah. But if you do type of empty value, it's an object. Um, and objects and functions, they're huge topics, and we will get into that in the next section, I believe. But until then, um, look through this write-up, and there is a challenge here. I kind of went through all the examples here um, already, so you could kind of refer to this uh, particular um, demonstration to solve the write-up. But essentially, just using the console log function. So in, in yours, I don't want you to use a REPL like what I'm doing. I want you to use uh, the like create a JavaScript file and then run it using Node. And I showed I showed you that how to do that in that previous um, JavaScript introduction video. So watch that if you don't know how to do that. But yeah, that's pretty much what this particular challenge is: um, using Node to execute and run your JavaScript um, file with these logs inside of it, which kind of goes through all of the. Um, basic value types and operators that JavaScript has to offer. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. So if you have any you know, comments about this particular format, um, I was thinking about maybe figuring out a way to... So the one, number one thing that is kind of, uh, kind of bothering me right now is about just using the book as the main way to watch it. I hope that this particular video is enough of a... Um, is enough for you guys like this little bit of a write-up this is like the the book is like 10 to 12 pages long and this is about one and a half page long write-up and I, I i try to condense it as much as possible because i'm personally a, a visual learner so i like to listen to things i like to watch things and i i, I once i watch something i could get a better mental image and that's how my brain works and that's how I operate. I like to create mind palaces in my head and kind of just put things in my head and remember what I saw and then try to replicate that. I, I mean, I do love reading too, but like I, my eyes get really tired very quickly when I like read for a long time. So I try to, I'm trying to create this for people just like me essentially, who are just, you know, like visual learners, right? So, um, the only issue I have, I hope that this is not enough. You know, at least this should be kind of, you should be able to read this. Also, like when you get into things, you're going to read a lot of documentation. So, but for me, like reading documentation is actually kind of fun because I, I'm learning something new, some new tools that I can use. So it's totally fine in that case. But yeah, um, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Uh, let me know um, things that I can improve upon, you know. I'm just starting out and I feel like I've made a lot of videos already, but at the same time, I, 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 you know, I kind of created this outline for just the JavaScript section and it's quite a bit already. So, and I haven't even finished the outline. I just kind of started thinking that this might be the best approach to get people started on programming. Yeah, but uh, play around with the language, you know, feel free to just skip through it a little bit and try making some rudimentary programs. Um, yeah, if you can, like I, 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 one of my favorite things when I was learning was making uh, Sudoku and making a solver for Sudoku. That was one of the f most fun challenge I had. Um, I did it, I, the way I solved it the first time was a very naive brute force uh, approach. Um, but yeah, I learned, a, I learned a ton just, you know, trying to figure out how to make sudoku and solve it so but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this uh tutorial and um feel free to join me on the next one thank you